Turning now to our final debate in diabetes segment, and today we are focusing on artificial intelligence and the role it should or should not play in transforming nutrition and diabetes care. Here now to weigh both sides are Dr. Samantha Kleinberg and Dr. Holly Nicastro. Thanks to you both today. All right, Dr. Kleinberg, I want to get started with you because you say, yes, it is time now to harness AI. Yeah, I think it's a really exciting time for AI, diabetes, and nutrition all coming together. Um, AI has already had successes in diabetes with FDA approved devices for diagnosing retinopathy, for clinical decision support, um, and now nutrition is really the next frontier where we don't have FDA approved devices or algorithms yet, but they're randomized controlled trials that are now showing a benefit and that actually show um, personalized diets do lead to better glycemic outcomes compared to Mediterranean diet, um, and also that there's this massive difference in how individuals react to the exact same food. Dr. Nicastro, you say, eh, not so fast, we are not quite ready for prime time. That's right. So we've seen some really exciting proof of principle and efficacy studies, but we haven't yet studied a diverse enough sample of participants for us to be able to say that any benefits we find are going to be applicable to all. So we need more diverse studies on more diverse people, diversity in demographics, diversity in how people access their health care, their education, geography, and more, so that we don't risk widening any health disparities. Dr. Kleinberg, is there anything in particular about using AI that gives you pause? I think, like Holly, um, I share the same concerns about, you know, we've studied isolated populations in Israel or in the Midwest, they haven't been necessarily representative of the entire U.S. or even other populations abroad. And so we don't know for sure how well these devices or algorithms are going to work for everyone. Um, I think the results are really exciting and promising. Um, and with AI in general, we always have to be worried about generalizing to new populations, that we might be picking up on something that's not necessarily related to the outcome, that's just an artifact or something like that. And so making sure we have robust algorithms is really important. Dr. Nicastro, how close do you think we are to being able to completely utilize AI in a clinical setting? I think we're close. Um, like Dr. Kleinberg mentioned, there we are using AI in other applications, just not yet for personalizing dietary recommendations. For us to make that more mainstream, I think a few things have to happen. Again, studying more diversity, but also making it a little more less burdensome and less invasive to collect some of the measures and some of the biospecimens we're going to need to drive the AI models. We need to make it more acceptable and easier for participants to provide stool samples, um, for us to be able to access genetic information, and more. But I think all of these things are on the near horizon and we could start to see this become mainstream in about five years. Oh, that's pretty soon. Would you feel comfortable with it being implemented sooner than that if physicians know to maybe take the data with a grain of salt? You know, we can take it with a grain of salt. I think we need to see a couple key studies publish their data first. The Nutrition for Precision Health study is going to really help to drive the field here. We are studying a very diverse sample of participants there. We also need to continue to weigh the costs and benefits. It's going to take money, it's going to take time, and it's going to take some anxiety for patients to provide the information we need to drive the models. So until we know that those models are going to produce robust and sustainable lifestyle change, enough to alter one's diabetes risk trajectory, it might yet not be worth it. Final thought from you both, and my question is, once we do all feel comfortable implementing AI to help transform nutrition, how big of an impact do you see it having in people's day-to-day -day lives? You first. So I'm very excited about the possibility here. I think people do crave personalization. People want to know that this is gonna work because this is for me. We just need to have all those caveats in place, make sure we're doing no harm, not widening health disparities, but I think there is a lot of potential here. Dr. Kleinberg? I agree with Dr. Nicastro. Um, I also think what's exciting is we can also personalize people's preferences, their constraints, what's available in their local area, right? Do they eat a vegetarian diet or their other cultural factors? And that's part of the personalized diet, right? Not just, you know, what's going to keep you healthiest, but what actually fits with your lifestyle. And so it might be easier for people to stick to these diets compared to some of the traditional guidance, um, which is really exciting. Also, it's currently burdensome to collect, you know, stool sample and all these other things from individuals, um, but it might not necessarily be necessary. And so some of the AI algorithms we're working on might be able to personalize to someone based on other characteristics and get very close to that in a much more lightweight way that doesn't have all the expense and doesn't have all the startup uh, time and energy. 
Well, we can all agree that it's very exciting to see how technology is transforming diabetes care. So thank you both so much for your time today and for your each uh, perspectives. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you.